Hello, welcome back PCAM to CRL 342. Time for another lab demonstration. I hope you're as excited as I am. All right, what are we doing today? Today, we are doing the um, visible spectra of halogens. Do two halogens, we're gonna do iodine. Iodine, you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that, I can hear that. It's a solid. Br2, right? Both of these are diatomics in their standard state, but Br2 is a liquid, I2 is a solid, but they're both very, fairly high vapor pressure. And indeed it is enough that if we take a single, we only had to put one crystallite in here. You'll see it actually broke up into two, but we put one, you only need one because the expansion, right? Thousand times expansion in the volume of the solid as it goes to the gas phase. That's plenty of gas with the vapor pressure of I2 for us. Uh, for the BR2, we pour in the BR2. Ooh, it's kind of cool. It's really creepy vapor that's heavier than air. So it just kind of leaks out and you can pour a little bit in there. You see, you can barely see any, see any brown color, not very much. Just a little tint of brown here. You don't put any liquid in. You don't have, if you had liquid in there, it'd be too much vapor already, right? You only need just a small amount. So we've done that. And then we have these little Teflon caps. Boom, boom, pop those in there and get them ready to go. Okay, now, um, next, right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna use that spectrum to determine the bond dissociation energy. We'll talk about the data analysis part later. Right now, let's talk about the experimental part, right? And what are we gonna do? Well, you saw this is not, this is not your usual cuvette, right? No, not at all. Instead, we're, instead of using, you know, the little square guys, you know what the little square guys look like, right? Or rectangular ones, the usual. Right? We're not gonna use this. We're not using one of those. Instead, oh no, they go in the same drawer, but sure. instead we're gonna use that gas cell. Longer path length, because of the lower density, we need a longer path length to get good absorption. And so we've got to get rid of, we're using the same carry 300, the usual, right? But we need to get rid of that uh, usual cell and use the gas cell instead. We're going to put this in here. So what we have to do is we have to take a screw out of here, right? And that screw that sets the usual cuvette holder in there. Where are we going to put this? Don't put it on the bench top. You'll lose it, right? No, we leave it in the spectrometer. That's where we don't lose it. I hate when people lose bits of my spectrometer, right? So then we remove the usual quick. It doesn't come out because it has the cooling, right? The, the temperature controller on it. So we just move it to the side, take this guy. It's got a couple of holes in the bottom. Line that up with the posts that go in there. Boom, there you go. And then we grab our sample holder and the light's gonna go in the long way, right? Here we've got windows on the ends. Do not touch those. They've gotta be clean. But the sides, you can touch the sides, you can hold it up here, boom, just stick that in and we get that nice long path length and that's good enough for a gas cell. So there you go. That's what it looks like when it's sitting in there. You close it up so that we don't get any scattered light. If you did uh, see some dirt on the end, make sure you use the optical paper, right? So we got to keep those ends. What are we going to do here? Remember spectroscopy, right? What did I say about spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is always a trade-off between signal to noise, resolution, and patience, right? We've got to cover the IR to the visible, but we want to find out where these peaks are. We're not doing anything quantitative for intensity, right? Remember in UV vis, very often in UV vis, you have to put something in the reference and the sample. Now we're only using the sample. Why? The reason why we only worry about having a sample and no reference is we're not doing this quantitative for intensity. We're doing quantitative for wavelength, right? Two very different parts of spectroscopy. Where are the peaks, right? The wavelength of the peaks and how big are the peaks? We don't care how big they are. They just have to be big enough, right? We don't want them to be too small. If they're too small, then you get bad signal to noise, right? Can't tell where the peak is, but we get bad peak shapes if we have too low intensity, right? But you don't want them to be too big either to saturate because then you don't know where the center of the peak is again. So always this trade off here, what's too much, what's too little. Here we want good peak shapes, big enough to be out of the noise range, right? But we really need to know where the center of the peak is. That's what we're really after. Ah, okay. So 
We just need, we don't need a reference, but we need a sample. And we're going to have to do good averaging to be able to find out at high resolution. Okay, so wait a second. We don't know exactly where the peaks are, and we need 15 of these. What we want to do is a common um, strategy, right, in spectroscopy is take a survey scan, a quick, low resolution, not necessarily the best signal noise, not necessarily the best peak shapes, low resolution, but quick to figure out what part of the spectrum is really important, then go over just that portion of the spectrum with high resolution. In this case, we're going to go um, 10 times the step size, uh, 10 times smaller, right? So we get 10 times as many steps per unit wavelength. But we're also going to wait much longer. That's what the high resolution, right? You have to wait much longer and take small steps. That's why we don't do a survey scan. Survey scan is quick, not as many steps, right? So let's do that for BR2. Um, Got to set a long uh, wavelength range. Um, low resolution, so we're not going to define the peaks too well. And we're going to scan from the IR down to the visible, 700 to 400 wave numbers very quickly, right? Oh, turn off the auto store. That's one of the first things we do out here, turn off the auto store, because we're going to save the data as a CSV file, right? To make sure we can read it and analyze it later in Google. All right, boom. Take a quick survey. Oh, it's really quick. I'll do it this way. And there you go. There's the quick survey. You see a big, big peak. Oh, wait a second. That big peak has a little shoulder on it, right? And then it also has some structure here. It's that structure that we're actually interested in, those more well defined peaks. We need 15 of these little guys, right? Those are the peaks we're after. Oh, okay. Wait a second. So they don't look too great right now. And what we're going to do, right, is we need 15 peaks and they have to be on the blue side, which is the blue side. The blue side is the short wavelength side, the high energy side. That's the blue side. This is the red side over here. Okay, so it's the blue side. And so we can see that these peaks are dying out. No, maybe there's some more here. All right. So let's, you know, scan this a bit further this way. We want to make sure that we get at least 15 peaks, it tells us. And so we're going to write down in our Let's take eh, 500 to what did it say? 500 to 540. All right, and then that will cover this whole range here, right? Maybe we'll pick up a few more peaks down here, and we'll get this looking good too. We're going to do this slow with a lot more peaks in order to get a nice high resolution scan. Bam! There we go. And then we don't have to change anything with the, the sample. That's just fine. We just change the sampling conditions and sure enough, oh, those peaks look much better. And a few more pop out of the noise down here, right? Again, how much signal is enough? As long as we've got good resolution of where the center of the peak is, now we can figure that out, right? Okay, so there we go. And those are looking pretty good. All right, boom. Wonderful. And it didn't take all day because we just took a little region. Now what we do is we take the, take the I2 out of here. That's the I2, we didn't know it's got the solid in it, so we know that. So we just replace it exactly the same way as before. Long path length, keep your hands off the ends of the cells. No fingerprints there, we don't want any spurious absorption. And now, again, we take a survey scan, right? The survey scan, fast, low resolution, try to figure out what is the critical part of the spectrum, and boom, wow, there we go. All right, you get tons, it goes all the way, see, man, now we're in that same region, they go all the way up to the top here. You get better resolution on these peaks, too. They're, they're much more contrast, right? So what we're gonna do is now, is blue end again. It's the blue end that really gives us the sensitivity. We'll talk more about that with the data. All right, that's what we have to blow up. Now we slow down the scan, we go to higher resolution, and we take a look at just that portion. And 
Again, we need about 15 peaks or more. Whoa, there we go. And those puppy, puppies, you can see how they just start to lose contrast to go in here. We can pick out a few there and march back. That's what we're after, okay? We're gonna save that data as a CSV file, right? Boom, save it. And that way we'll be able to analyze it later. Cleanup is always important. What are we gonna do with cleanup? Well, beside the solid, don't get rid of it. You can put that back in the bottle. The solid we can put back in the bottle. Gas, and the other one, the vapor and the gas that's in here, we do wanna get rid of those. And the way we get rid of those is by purging with N2. So we've got a bottle of N2, let me set that down. Got a bottle of N2 down here, a cylinder of N2, and uh, we'll use that to blow out the I2 and the BR2 from the cell. It'll be nice and clean. We'll pop off the Teflon stoppers. Wipe that Teflon stopper. Pop those off, and then we can stick it back in the drawer right next to where the cuvettes were where it was at the beginning. All right. Thank you. And we'll move on next to the data analysis.